You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Friday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. Do you know what's going on in the world of volatility? Well, let's find out together, shall we? Because it is time for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, optionsinsider.com, except no substitutes, as well as, of course, from the network upon which all you folks are having a good time. I hope you're having a good time this week. I'm having a good time bringing all this fun to you, all of us here at the Options Insider, having a good time bringing all this fun content to you this week. So if you missed anything, it's all hanging out on the feed for you. Of course, if you missed, you like Vol, you missed our great pro Q&A with a guy who has a little bit to do with Vol, Mr. Scott Nations, created one or two Vol products in his day, fresh off his Jeopardy run. <laughs> that was fun in and of itself, just uh, tuning in to hear his Jeopardy experiences. Uh, but yes, he was tackling your questions on the pro Q&A. If you want to check that out as well as the 150 or so others that are up there waiting for you, as well as, I don't know, 100-odd options oddities, as well as early access to all the stuff that we did down there at OIC, which is hitting the network in the coming weeks, as well as a whole bunch else, including great giveaways like Pro Trading Crates. Congratulations to our longtime member, Age Del Aquarius. Just won his second Pro Trading Crates. So you keep your name in the hat long enough. You will keep winning, listeners. Only one place to go to figure that all out for yourselves, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, P-R-O, or for you cool kids out there, I haven't dropped this in a while, for you cool kids, slash secret club. That, that's just for you. Don't tell anybody else about that you're all. Just for you listening, you know who I'm talking to. And speaking of talking to people, let's see who I'm talking to on the old program this week. First, let's go out uh, to the Urex hot seat where we are joined once again by our old pal, the once future and now present Dr. V Stocks, the newly minted, because the man's crunching a lot of V Stocks data these days, aka Mr. Russell Rhodes, who's also holding court over there at the Kelly School of Business, where he is corrupting the young minds of the future. Mr. Rhodes, I do have a challenge for you. I was doing our TWIFO show yesterday with a guest who's a professor over there at the School of Business at University of Illinois, and he just won the Undergraduate Teacher of the Year Award. Uh, so, so we have high expectations for the academic members on our network now. You got, you got to really raise that bar, sir. Yeah, I saw, um, I, I, I saw he won that award. I have never won a teaching award, which, which makes me think I probably just have terrible imposter syndrome, and I think I'm much better at what I do than I am. So there, but no, he's a great guy. He lives out here in the Western suburbs with me. Uh, we've met because, you know, we're, if, if I had to find somebody in the world that was as close to me professionally, it's him. You know, we're, but he's a professor at Illinois. I'm down at Indiana. We both still live in the Chicago area. We still have a toe in the, uh, in the industry. 
Um, but yeah, nobody ever, I, I never win teaching awards. I, I, I think I might be too, too honest with the students and give them too much material to criticize me about my feedback. <laughs> Coming from a supposed bastion of higher education where all of my professors were, uh, shall we say, mediocre on the teaching end. Great researchers and no, no uh, great theoreticians, no, not great yeah. educators. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that's always impressive to me is see a professor who can actually teach. Uh, a respectful thing. So we, you have time. You're just you're new. You're young. I'm working on it. I'm working on. It. Actually, you have to be at IU three years to win a teaching award, and this is my third oh, year. So you don't so. even qualify yet. So there we go. I this know. I it. know. I don't. But this I, is. I got. I got. I got to whine anyway. You know me. <laughs> All right. Not so. whine, and I'm not on the program. Coming soon, <laughs> a teaching award for the once yeah. and future Dr. B Stocks. I don't know. He's a bit of an educator himself. Maybe he'll win an award someday as well. Maybe the meatball will finally give you an award. He is the once and only Rock Lobster, a.k.a. Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com, who's battling clam pirates as we speak. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the show. Any awards in your future, sir? Um, I don't know. My students might give me an award for being quiet. They're like, why don't you just not say anything for a couple of weeks? Well, maybe not. I don't know. Your students do pay you money, which I guess I guess at the end of the day is the ultimate award, right? Right. Yes. I, you know, they're just, they're just happy that they learn how to make money. They're happy that they learn how to trade the vol products. Um, uh, they're just happy. They're just happy, which is more than we can say for the Rock Lobster. But can we say it for the vol market this week? Let's find out, listeners. It is time for the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Vol Review, bringing to a close a tumultuous week in the markets and indeed in volatility. We kicked it off with, I guess, what you can call the return of the meme stock frenzy, meme stock 2.0, or is it maybe 3.0 now? I lose track <laughs> how many meme stocks we've been in now. But either way, kick things off with a frenzy. Things are rallying hard. You know, your AMCs, your games, all that fun. It seems like we've mostly crested that wave and come on down the other side now. Listeners, uh, we also, of course, had a cooler than expected CPI number. Everyone was, of course, waiting for inflation. And that number really seemed to boost the markets this week and kind of give the old gut punch to volatility. As we're coming into the final session of the week, after markets have kissed or closed at new all-time highs almost every day for the latter portion of the week, uh, we are now kind of hanging out pretty much unch to end the week. NASDAQ off slightly about 0.05%. S&P up slightly, not even 0.05%. The Dow leading the charge up about 0.2%. And our old friend that was giving up the ghost earlier this week, Russell 2000, now rallying up about 0.1%, pretty close to it out there. All that a long way around to saying, our Vol friends a little bit lighter this week than they were last week. Last week, we were at about 12 and three quarters. Now coming in to start the show, we are hanging out right around 12 and a quarter in VIX cash, obviously down about half a point on the week. VBIX, though, we have had a little bit of froth. We were at about a 73 last week. That's a hard level to maintain. So we are up about five points on that on the week, 78. Still a level uh, to pay attention to out there. We are in that interesting time of year. Again, normally when we see VBIX kissing a 75 or, dare I say it, breaking through it, we're like, okay, here we go. Get ready for Vol, vol to come roaring back to life. But... In early May, not much on the horizon really until the election or until the next earnings season. Uh, this is a time when we could maybe languish in this period for a while. So uh, intriguing stuff afoot out there, but that's a long way around. Let's jump to it now and see what everyone's seeing, what's lighting up their tapes out there on the ball front this week. Uh, let's start with the rockingest of lobsters, sir. Mr. Rock Lobster, what caught your eye on the ball front this week, sir? Oh my gosh! I go I go before Doctor Vix. Is is the is the sun still yellow and the sky still blue? I can't believe it. I, I before Doctor Vix. Anyway, you, you get I'm, your I, own show in like an hour, so I don't know what you're complaining. I, I'm about. free. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> um. 
you know what? All time lows for the volatility products. Um, I believe. I think Russell probably laughing all the way to the bank. All time highs in S fix, right? Um, so you know, you're, you ultimately, you know, you learned a lot. I learned a long time ago in like sitting in a pit. Uh, you can think one thing, but the market's thinking another. So you know, with whatever we can create as a you know, as negative news or whatever, the, the reality is is stocks keep going up. Um, vol keeps going down. Uh, realized volatility is starting to get into the single digits, I believe. Um, I am seeing volatility at two-year lows in many, many, many stocks. Um, it sets up for basically my favorite trading setup of all time, which is just buy the crap out of everything and buy as many VIX puts as you can and just wait. <laughs> um, so anytime we're, we're tickling, I think we're going to trade the 11 handle today, at least tickle it for the first time. And uh, since what, December, I think we saw it the last time. So listen, Nothing's going to happen unless something happens, of course, this weekend. Anything can happen, any overnight news. However, you got NVIDIA news coming out on the 22nd. I feel that will be a volatility moat of despair. Um, and you can see all the term structure pricing that um, until NVIDIA earnings come out. And if they're good, you know, who knows? I mean, 5,400, 5,500, whatever, right? AI forever. So market loves that stuff. Um, and everybody got to relearn the power of 600 volatility in a meme stock. Um, it's just that this time, instead of it taking a couple of weeks to get to 600, they got it to 600, what, in one day in GameStop, I think? How, how long did it take? I think it was Insto. Insto volatility this week. Um, so that's what I'm seeing. So the steeper the curve gets, the the more the market is looking for short-term vol to go lower, and that's what we got. So unless there's a reason to change that right now, I don't see it. And, you know, products like UVXY, even with the market down here, decaying at pretty fierce rates, like 25, 26 cents a day, something like that. Um, so, hey, <laughs> let, let the melt begin as far as I'm concerned. So a volatility moat of despair. I'm trying to figure out how that works. Is the moat filled with despair and you fall into it and you get the despair? Is it uh, you come up to it and then you can't cross so you have despair? If you get over it, are you then beset? How does the despair no, you, work? You got to go you got to go like Dante's Inferno where you <laughs> the vol the vol buyers jump into the moat. Oh, okay. Right? <laughs> And then the moat pulls them back in as they try to wait for their VIX calls to make the money. Just pulls them back. You're making nothing on those VIX calls. So by that analysis, everyone who's owned a VIX call for the last couple of years has been in, in that mode of despair, just getting sucked are, back like, down. Today, though, they're literally they're getting their head put under the water and just and just violated. So like when you're trading at 1217, you got a month to go and the 13 and a half call is a dollar fourteen. I'm just saying, okay, all I can see is vol on that from live vol 64%. And by the way, I know it all could change, but <laughs> anybody buying juice is just getting a shellacking. Um, so anyway, that's how vol gets lower. You know, everybody loads up at 12, 13 thinks, okay, we're going to get the bounce. And then not only does the bounce not happen, but the market doesn't move. And, you know, you're a liquidity provider. You, you can remember the summers where, <laughs> you know, you'd rather be painting a house than showing up to work every day because every day, you know, is going to cost you another X number of dollars. Uh, although I have to say in like 99, 2000, 2001, that really wasn't a problem because uh, we had realized vol. Uh, but, you know, as of right now, you know, you're at all time highs and you are in a bit of a vol despair mode. So I've I have held off actually going yard into buying um, some VIX in June and July yet. Um, but I'm I'm sure next week 
I will get a little bit more active in there. Uh, and mostly because the, the contango, like, you know, we'll get that in the vol curve, but, uh, it's, I think it's setting up for an interesting trade, but I, it's again, not higher highs are not going to surprise me. I would be more surprised by 5,200 at this point than 5,400. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so just to clarify for our listeners, if you own VIX calls right now, you are being sucked into the mode of despair. Your head is being held underwater and you are being violated at this moment. That is correct. <laughs> just to clarify the imagery for anyone who was, who was uncertain. <laughs> Well, if, 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 if you're like, hey, you know, should I buy some, you know, I, I think I just gave you the story. I, like, I, don't, I, I don't know how you want to, you want to, do you want to try to find the, the silver lining in that cloud? <laughs> Knock yourself out. Okay. Is, the- is, is, is this, I'm, I'm just going to degenerate even more on this one. Um, I mean, is this the volatility traders version of the guy driving around in the van without any windows offering candy to volatility traders to just get in the van? It'll be okay. Just buy the VIX calls. <laughs> they, they taste great. Come on in. The first one's free. Yeah, yeah come on say, in. It's totally fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> but but, but, the, but that, ver- that version is making VIX low. It's like, all right, we'll put VIX down here. That are, you know, we, we tricked them with candy once and they, they were okay. But let's, 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 here, we're going it, to, it's not candy this time. It's ice cream. It's an even lower VIX. Get in the van. <laughs> Got to put the explicit tag on this show if we keep going. I know farther. it's pretty bad. Down it's this like rabbit hole. Cut away it is episode. getting something. Yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> so I, I will. I will try to steer us back in a in a new and and more intellectually challenging um, direction. Uh, I had a little thought, and when and I, one of the reasons I love doing this show is I always have I always, something always gets created for me to work on. Uh, but I'm going to ask you guys if anybody else has ever done this. I, I, I'm wondering if there is some sort of seasonality to VVIX as far as how many weeks until expiration. Because we, we, we worked our way up a bit with VVIX uh, this week. We were you know under pressure last week. This is the week that most people would roll their positions from, um, from May into June. So I'm I'm just wondering if you know when we've got a couple of weeks till the mo- the the near dated expiration, if VIX isn't doing a whole lot, you know everybody's already got their own positions on, so VIX will go down to a low level, but it won't attract the call buyers. Uh, and now you know now now June will give you a pretty good bang for your buck relative to a move out of VIX, and you know maybe people are starting and and the really smart volatility traders know you want to be in the near dated stuff, even if you think of volatility events coming by December. You really want to have long it may or at this point, I think June exposure. So I'm just I'm wondering, I, I'm I'm gonna try to break out the numbers and look at the average VBIX change on a week over week basis based on what week we are in the VIX expiration ca- calendar. I think there might I, be I think some, there's some logic yeah. there, but and and if somebody else ran the numbers, that's great. So I don't have to do it. But it, it it seems to me that there 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 might be something there. I think there, I think there is some logic to that because I've been digging a little yeah. bit deeper into VBIX after last week, looking at some of those numbers I was looking at historically. It got me got me pondering the historical levels of VBIX. I think there could be something to that. And to my knowledge, I don't know of anyone who has done that from a pure weeks to expiration perspective. So there could be something there. At the end of the day, we've always discovered in the long history of this show the devil is in the details for all of these vol products and, and the. Smallest, sometimes seemingly most minute detail could cause unforeseen consequences in some of these products. So it wouldn't surprise me if that is indeed the case. So I, I like that. I like that for a homework assignment for uh, the once for and me. future. <laughs> for me. Yes, for the once and future. Dr. Vic slash V stocks, depending on his mood and the reason. Now I guess you can call him Dr. V Vix as well because he's got that homework. As we keep on rolling, listeners. Uh, let's get out to the vol surface to see what's catching our eye out there this week. As you might imagine, it's uh, mostly lower. <laughs> Coming in at the start of the show, the May future, which again, not much, uh, not much longer, not much longer for the world here. But uh, moving down almost a full point, about nine tenths of a point when we kicked off the show. A uh, June, not that far behind it. June down about eight tenths of a point. So continuing that trend of keeping that front portion of the curve moving almost in lockstep if we go all the way out now through to october which is where we've seen that spike for the election for some time we're shy of an 18 handle we were well north of 2021 not too long ago listeners uh 1791 out there in october when we kicked off the show and if we keep going back out to december it comes right back down 
Uh, we have to go back to pretty much January of next year, and you get back to about a 1760 out there. So that's where we're looking from how we're shaping up from a contango perspective out there. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, we'll start with you, sir. Well, the uh, once in future Dr. B Stocks is crunching away at his homework. So what's catching your eye out there in the vol surface this week? Uh, I, you know, it's, it's, it's normalizing for, um, VIX being this low, you're starting to get like a very steep curve again. Um, I think for the first time this year, like most of the forward vols are in a more historical, like, you know, close to a historical average. Um, that's the way I look at it, you know, okay, how far are they deviating from average numbers? Um, so those are getting a little bit back to normal. Yeah, and I, I would say something too, a Russell idea. I don't, I don't think that's a bad idea at all about you know the seasonality of, of VVIX. Um, because some of my students have mentioned, you know, you get like you know, the futures get are way over cash. And then sometimes I think the you know the volatility is in the future spread between future and cash and not so much in the options because already the futures are so expensive, right? So mm -hmm. if you want to buy out of the money calls, you're already paying a dollar, two dollars more. Um, to where VIX is trading because the future price is so high and the options trade off the future, uh, which could, right, de facto lower, um, you know, could get you lower vols, lower VIX yeah. numbers. Um, so I think I think that's a totally uh, reasonable observation by Russell. Um, but yeah, you have again. I the steeper the curve goes, the more the market is expecting or you know, realize vol is lower in the short term. That's generally how it works. Um, you know, if you just go back, look historically, you get a super steep curve, uh, VIX curve. So that's sloping down in the front on the left side and sloping up steeper in the back. Uh, usually you have realized vol in the single digits in SPY or SPX. Um, and that's, that's what all of a sudden, it, it literally, you know, I guess we had that month of April, woo, right? And it's all gone. <laughs> it's all gone uh, from the option pricing. So whatever everybody was worried about in April, so inflation's, I think, not going away. Um, you know, I think the rate thing goes off and on. Um, but the reality is I don't think they can lower rates from where we are uh, until the government stops spending money because they have to sell bonds. And I think the markets kind of figure that out and don't really have a solution for it. I guess, except stop spending. But, you know, if companies can grow, right? And of course the internet has created like almost infinite scale um, and AI will create another level of infinite scale. Um, heck, what the heck? Things are gonna go up. So, um, and I think that's where we find ourselves right now. So we're climbing out of the mode of despair and into maybe the season of the abyss. On, on, the, on the vol surface. Mr. Rhodes, sir, same question for you. What's catching your eye out there on the vol surface this week? Well, I, I was a little surprised to see uh, a little bit earlier when I do my, my 10 a.m. thing, um, you had the V stock, and I know we haven't gotten to V stocks yet, but uh, on the V stocks uh, term structure, the V stocks uh, front month future was, uh, it, it's come in since that market is closed, but it was over a point premium relative to spot when we've got settlement next Wednesday, uh, which I, I thought was kind of tight considering how low we are right now. Uh, and the VIX, you know, and VIX is even tighter than that. It's at like 75 cents right now. So, um, you know, I, I just, I, I think everybody's still slightly on edge, not nearly as much on edge as they used to be. Uh, I, I actually think that um, the, the number of people that are tired of, of getting in the van for the ice cream or the candy and buying the VIX calls, maybe you're on the sidelines right now. Uh, maybe they have this, this impression that we're going to have a dull summer and then maybe, you know, with the election facing us down, they'll come back into the market or, or whatever. Uh, the, and the curve, the, the VIX curve kind of reflects that the V stocks curve doesn't. Uh, and I checked to see, I didn't see any major European numbers that come out before expiration next uh, Wednesday, uh, nor, of course, any any big U.S. numbers that come out before expiration. Uh, I think that just might be a, a function of when we do get the volatility events, it seems like V-Stocks runs up faster than VIX. So uh, maybe, uh, you know, maybe some Europeans are, are, are long some volatility just in case 
uh, we get some goofiness this weekend. And, and it's you almost don't want to predict hypothetical goofiness because so many of the hypotheticals I used to use have come true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, <laughs> so I used to always kid about if you know my, my running thing when I would defend UVIX was, well, if you know Putin's going to invade a neighbor over the weekend, buy UVIX on, on a Friday. Well, that that's not even funny anymore. Uh, yes. Uh, so many yeah. things have come to pass in the last four years that were previously just theoretical listeners. <laughs> but you have invoked V-Stock, so it is time to go international listeners with a little bit of the old international volatility review. It's time to explore what's happening in the volatility market beyond our shores. It's time for the International Volatility Review. The International Volatility Segment is brought to you by Eurex, home of Euro stocks, V stocks, DAX, and the German government bond based Eurobund, Eurobobble, Euro shots derivatives. Eurex is the leading European derivatives exchange. Learn more about trading V stocks futures and options, the European volatility benchmark, at www.eurex.com slash V stocks. All right, listeners, let's get to it. Let's peer across the pond, shall we, and see what's cooking in the international vol waters, kicking things off, obviously, with our old friend V Stocks coming into the start of the show. It has uh, given up the ghost quite a bit. You know, one of the things we've been coming to grips with for a while here now on the show is just the relationship, as Russell was just alluding to, the interplay between VIX and V Stock. When one of them's going to catch a bid, when they're going to move in lockstep, I'm still working to dial that in. I'm sure a lot of you are out there as well, listeners. Uh, coming in to start of the show, we had V stocks at a 1213 listener. That's down almost one and a half points, 1.4 points. So you could see, once again, a lot of interesting things going on in that relationship in a week when VIX Cash has only given up about half a point. We've seen 3x that. In V stocks out there. So clearly there are other games afoot out there, which again makes this analysis fascinating. Also, looks like we just bounced off of what was the 52 week low. That was 12 12. So we're at a 12 13. So pretty much at the 52 week low right now, listeners, for V stocks. Uh, we hit it back in December of last year. We threatened it again, got down to about, I think, 12 18 in March before rallying again, and now we're right back down there again. Also a long way away from the 23 and a third that we were at back in October of last year. So if you're wondering for some frame of reference, that's where we're hanging out right now in B-Stocks listeners, pretty much at the bottom of the 52-week range. And if past his prologue right now, probably threatening to go lower. But Mr. Dr. V-Stocks, Mr. Doctor, say that five times fast. Uh, Mr. Doctor... I know you've been crunching a lot of numbers out here in between episodes of this fine program. Uh, what's catching your eye out there in V stocks land this week? And you kind of just touched on the relationship between VIX and V stocks. Anything else catching your eye out there, sir? Uh, no, the 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 front month future. Uh, typically, the you would expect uh, the V stocks future to be at, at, at uh, well over a dollar premium relative to um, uh, the V stocks fu front month future. We should be at about a buck sixty premium to the uh, front month VIX future. And today is the day that I roll these, where now I'm switching to June. Um, and the June V stocks future is when I, and my time is at 10 a.m. each day when I feel like both markets have settled down a bit. Uh, v stocks is only at a 25 cent premium to um, to VIX. And I typically, I, I, my system right now, I'm going back looking through it. Uh, my system right now does have us long V stocks and short VIX. Uh, and I'm down, uh, down about 20 cents on that right now. So um, that's, uh, you know, that, that relationship's tighter than it normally is. It just could be, you know, everybody globally is, you know, not only. Do they feel abused and taken advantage of in the U.S.? But I guess call buyers in Europe are on V stocks are, are also feeling a little bit of a pinch and afraid to get in the van. However, um, I do have two different systematic methods of trading V stocks. 
Um, one is is to to be consistently short. Uh, the other one is to be be consistently long in the form of selling an at the money V stocks future. I'm sorry, selling an at the money V stocks call option and buying two out of the money V stocks call options. Uh, that and, and doing that in a way that I'm able to take in a credit. Uh, that system uh, this morning. Uh, sold the uh, June 14 calls for 90 cents and purchased two of the June 18 calls for uh, 40 cents each. And and the whole idea with with that sort of trade is if we uh, if we do get some sort of a volatility event, you can trade out of it fairly quickly. Uh, if the, if v, VIX and V stocks keep doing what they've been doing, staying at relatively low levels, uh, you pocket that credit and then you move on to the next trade. Uh, so you know within V stocks, uh, the, I think the futures are a little tighter than they should be right now. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that widens out. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a move higher in D stocks if the front month even outpaces a bit to the upside. And when I say front month, I mean the June contract now. Uh, so that's you know that's where we are at on V stocks. Not any really interesting trades. I started going through the tape before we we talk about that market. Nothing fairly interesting. That that you know no big trades that that are head scratchers or anything like that. Mr. Rock Lobster, you know, Mr. Mr. Rhodes here has been laying down some interesting spread trades between VIX and V-Stocks of late. I don't know. You might have a new spreading strategy you have to add to your newsletters. What do you think, sir? Well, I, I just have to copy what he does. It's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Just, I think, I think uh, there's a I whole in, industry of people that have copied like his me. research ideas on us at the at our uh, our event in Chicago. Like, ooh, you know, I still have it. I still have I finally remember the dollar over one with a week to go. Um, so yeah. That does help me kind of stay in some of these trades sometimes. And I'm like, oh, um, I'm still, I don't, to be honest, I don't even know where I could trade a V stocks. Like, can I, my world, can, I've, I've learned uh, because of teaching and everything, my world tends to be very insular. Like people are like, why don't you trade futures? Like, it's just, it's hard for me to look at too many things basically. Cause half the time I'm teaching classes or, writing stuff, or you know what the deal is, Mark. So I like to do new stuff. I like to read about doing new stuff. But ultimately, I just end up doing the stuff that I know worked the week before. <laughs> so I don't, I should branch out more, but but I, I would like, because uh, I like to get a beat on like what's going on in Europe with the V stocks. But I, can we even trade it in a, like a regular retail account here? I, 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 I trade it in my, um, in my interactive broker's account. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can trade it. And, and the options, just uh, structurally, uh, the, the unlike the VIX options, the, the VSTOX options are options on futures. So you don't need, a, you don't, you don't need, um, you know, a, a securities account like we need in the U.S. to trade it. Um, I, uh, the, I, I, Used to trade DAX futures all the time, and apparently I had let the permissions lapse. And when I went to put on a V-Stocks trade uh, about for the first time in a while, about six weeks ago, uh, I had to ask for permission, and I got permission within five minutes, and then I traded it. Okay. So it wasn't so, you know, I, and I always think of IB uh, for things like that just because they truly are, they, they really are global. You know, if you're going to try to trade anything outside of the United States, uh, I think they're they're as good as any of the uh, discount brokers. Yeah, IB is kind of their premier yeah. domestic partner for this stuff. There are some yeah. other outlets you can trade them to. It might be worth compiling a list because you're not the first person to ask that question, Mr. Rock Lobster. But definitely IB is a definite place we could recommend for trading these. So again, growing concern for those of you out there looking at the volume front and thinking, I'm, I may want to dip my toes in those waters. Uh, starting to get more liquidity on that front. I know when we, I first started paying attention to V-Stocks. It was probably back when Putin rolled tanks the first time in Crimea, so about a decade ago in 2014. And back then, the volume numbers were still pretty anemic, and it was really hard to get here for domestic U.S. customers. So uh, the game has certainly changed. The volume is ticking up, and there are domestic players you've actually heard of now that offer it. So if you are intrigued, maybe you're looking right now and saying, you know, the domestic vol front kind of 
let's go back to the rock lobsters analogy. It's a mode of despair. I don't want to get violated in the mode of despair. Where else can I look? Then maybe, maybe international vol is a good place for you to look. Since we're talking volume listeners, uh, let's keep the party rolling with some of our volume breakdown. Let's get out to uh, the mothership, at least here in the U.S. Of course, we're talking about uh, Mr. Vix. Is it lighting up the tape? Coming into the end of a banger week, we had CPI, we had meme stock 2 slash 3.0, we had a lot of things popping off this week, still had some earnings. Did all of that amount to a heck of a lot of paper? Couple of days, yeah. We had a couple of banger days out here this week. In aggregate, though, the volume trend has been down. I mean, it's hard, whenever VIX starts sniffing close to a million contracts ADV, you know that's not really sustainable if you've been watching VIX for a long time. Things are really popping off in the broad market for VIX to be putting up north of 900,000 contracts a day. And that is the case. The ADV has come back in about 124,000 contracts, actually. So a fair amount. Down to 774. Seems like we're going to hit that today. Already at 529,000 on the tape today. We'll get to the breakdown for every day this week in a second. First, let's go out. Uh, to the top, the size positions. What's open for size in VIX options right now? You might be saying, okay, now there have to be some puts in the top 10, right? Because we're at pretty much 52-week lows in most of the vol indices out there. Realize vol is anemic. Everyone's got to be buying puts out there. And the answer for all of you out there is no. It's still 9 to 1 calls over puts in the top 10 this week. You will find the first and only put right at the bottom of the list. Number 10, listeners. 220,000 of the May 15 puts. I don't know what it takes to make it put season again in VIX. There was a while there, listeners, as you'll recall, when we were, shall we say, a little bit more elevated. That uh, it was all puts all the time. Obviously, when you're down at a 12, too, structurally, there's not a lot of strikes left. So there's a lot of that going on as well. Again, the devil is very much in the details with these products. But still, if you're coming here looking for a put palooza, unfortunately, you have to wait another week at least. Number nine, 220,000 of the May 47 halves. Right back to it. My favorite strike on the board. Number eight, 223,000 of the May 16s. What's that doing there? That's, that's comparatively sensible. Number seven. So here we go. Right back to it. 229,000 of the AUG, 47 halves. Number six, we got 232,000 of the May 25s out there. So intriguing mix of strikes out there. Number five, 243,000 of the June 20s, two O's. Number four, 251,000. So we're already at number four. We're barely north of a quarter of a million contracts, listeners. We've got the May 35s. Number three, May 35 is not doing it for you. Allow me to present 263,000 of the June 35s, holding down the number three spot. Number two, 286,000 of the May 20s. And once again, we have a out of the money, but all things considered, decently reasonable position at number one, 348,000 of the May 18 calls, listeners. So there you go. Put fans, got to wait another week out there. Maybe dive into that mode of despair. See what you can find for yourselves. Because it's time for us to find a little bit of Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. All right, there it is. His contractually obligated double playing of his theme, Mr. Rhodes, sir, what caught your eye in the weekly options this week? Well, if my, if my file will pop up, I'll let you know. There wasn't a whole lot going on this week. Uh, in there, I think today, last I checked, we hadn't even had a, a, a we had not had a single um, weekly trade that, uh, on the, that was above 100 contracts on the tape. So it's been a really quiet week for that stuff. Usually the week before expiration will be like that because you'll often see uh, in the in the weeklies somebody come up and try to take advantage of some sort of economic number that's on the horizon that's between expirations. We really didn't have that. But if you did, you would have just traded the, the standards that expire this coming week. Um, I don't know why that file will not pop up. Uh, come on, there we go. All right, Monday, Monday, Monday with VIX at 1339. Uh, we Somebody came in and bought 2200 of the June 12th, 16 calls at 78 cents, sold 2200 of the June 12th, 23 calls for 23 cents, uh, taken in or, or cost them 55 cents. Uh, they can make, a, if we get some sort of volatility event between now and June 12th, 
Uh, and the only big economic number that I saw between now and then is the May um, the May employment number. Uh, the twelfth is also uh, it's a it, the twelfth is the next Fed meeting, but these would expire the morning before. So uh, so we saw that on Monday, and then on Wednesday, kind of a similar trade. VIX was down at twelve sixty eight. And somebody bought 100 of the June 12th, 18 calls for 39 cents and sold uh, 100 of the June 12th, 20 calls for 27 cents, spending 12 cents to maybe make a buck 88 again if we get some sort of volatility event by the middle of June. And then we had been we had seen a lot of bullish trades uh, using the um, basically using May 29th options. Uh, I don't think there's anything that could make the market misbehave between now and May 29th. Uh, somebody else agrees. I don't like this trade. There's always the trade I don't like. I don't like this trade. Uh, somebody sold 300 of the May 29th 13 calls yesterday with VIX around 1250. Uh, they took in uh, pretty much a dollar on all of them. Uh, a few of them, that was 98 cents. Uh, you know, I, I really hope that they purchase the futures to offset the risk of those short calls, uh, I couldn't find a couldn't find a thirty lot in the futures that may indicate that, but that's a tough one to pick up on. So, not particularly crazy about any of those three trades, uh, unless somebody knows something's coming in June that I'm not aware of. I did check just to see because uh, I had seen in passing that Biden and Trump are going to get together for Old Man Fest. Uh, in front of nobody for for a June debate, but that was not until the toward the end of the month. That was the only thing that I thought maybe, uh, you know, if, if if Trump creams Biden in the debate and people are concerned about that or vice versa, um, or or it's a complete tie and we're just continue to be clueless, but we're scared to death of either of those guys being the next president. Um, that that might end up in some sort of volatility event, but uh, we got to wait till late June for that one. Old man fest. <laughs> yeah, I just I picture the two old guys sitting in the balcony at the Muppets. Yes, that's what yes. we got running for president. Statler and Waldorf. Yes, just yeah. uh, rocking away in the balcony and yelling at each other. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Let's see if we see any paper out here this week. Like I said, VIX was uh, struggling to to fight its way out of the hole today and starting to catch up. In fact, as we were talking here, putting up some more paper, up to about 590,000 contracts on the tape today. So that's respectable. The big dog today, 46, almost 47,000 of the AUG 13 puts. So there are puts trading listeners, just not enough to fight their way into the top 10. Number two, 40,000 of the AUG 47 halves, right back at it. My favorite strike, it is inescapable. Every day this thing's printing. Number three, 25,000 of the July 11 puts. You like those, listeners? July 11 puts. I'll have to go look and see really quickly. What, what are those going up for? Do we have a new ridiculous put strike to discuss here on the show? Those are going up for five cents. Mr. Rock Lobster, are you a buyer of the July 11 puts for a nickel, sir? Um, I have to say they, they don't look ridiculous. <laughs> um, they're like, they, there's a shot, you know, there's a shot at these things now. Um, I, I, you know, it's always, it's always sticky down here. Uh, but I have to say that just coming off of what we did, I think it's, I think there's a decent, I definitely a decent shot, um, that they become something, but 25,000, I have seen a lot more. And in the May cycle too for next week, you know, the 12 and a half, 21,000 are trading today. So there's, there's definitely been a little, uh, there's been a bid for stuff that there normally has not been a bid for. Um, you also got another three days before the NVIDIA earnings. So it's like, you know, you know you're holding, if you're holding premium, like I said, you're, you're in the moat, man. You're in the moat for a couple of days still. Just put that in your calendar, listeners. The Rock Lobster said the July 11 puts for a nickel are quote unquote reasonable. That's where we are from a vol perspective. 11 puts. Just uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. In fact, we'll put it out to you folks, the ultimate arbiters. You like those for a nickel? Yes or no? We'll let you know what you think a little bit later in the show. That's why you got to be following us at options on Twitter the other day. Someone hit us up the other day. They're like, your handle's at options? They couldn't believe it. I was like, where you been? 
Where you been for the past, oh, decade plus? <laughs> We've been holding court on Twitter for a while. A number four, 23,000 of the AUG 36s, and number five today, 21,000 of the May 12 half puts. Uh, yesterday, one of the more banger days we've seen in a while, 1.1 million contracts on the tape. 83,000 was the big dog of the July 18s. Now, that was a funky one. Number two, 45,000 of the May 14 calls. Number three, 42,000 of the June 20s. Number four, 41,000 of the AUG 47 halves. Again, I can't escape these freaking things. And number five, 37,000 of the May 35s. In terms of size, prints out there yesterday, what caught my eye, and I mentioned this a little bit yesterday on the option block, was that big block of the June 18, excuse me, July 18s. In fact, they went up as a risk reversal, ratio risk reversal. Looks like paper sold 70,000 of the 18 calls in July and then bought 22,000 of the 14 half puts uh, they have here it priced out for even money i'll have to go look and see exactly what the prices were that went up for uh, but either way a bit of a weird one obviously they did more of the 18s later on eighty three thousand. so you like that listeners kind of a funky ratio collar almost makes some sense if it went up against futures or some other long position uh, we don't see that too often and we don't see a lot of vix collars which if you think about it vix is actually a good product for a collar because you have a bid to the calls and a discount to the puts. So collar wise, it sets up nicely. We should see more of these, but for whatever reason, we don't. And then we also saw a couple of put flies, a couple of flies yesterday, including a 16, 15, 13 half put fly going up 10,000 times for, they paid 37 cents for it. And they also saw the July, excuse me, the June 15, 20 call spread going up for 64 cents, 20,000 times. Let's get paper buying that bad boy. Some of the interesting prints Wednesday though was the banger day. Closing in on 2 million contracts. I haven't seen that in a while. 1.84 million. The big print listeners, 100,000 exactly. Not 99, 999, not 100,003 or anything like we usually see. 100,000 exactly of the October 42 halves. If you're wondering what the hell that was, listeners, it was a big print. 99,000, I guess they did another 1,000 after that. They, it looks like they dumped them for 46 cents. But then again, it's hard to tell for sure. The market was 44 at 51 when they went up. VIX was still a little bit juicier. But either way, uh, yeah, that, that was a pretty juicy, about a 90 ball on these. So if they are overriding these, uh, they caught a decent bid. It's all the way out to October, though. So remember, October, that's where we're talking that premium still lurks in the futures. They had an 18 handle when they were sold these. So again, 42 half, a little bit of a different beast. Would you sell these 100,000 times between now and October? And what would you have on against it, listeners? Because obviously something else is lurking against it. We already saw as well 25,000 of the June 15, 35 call spreads going up, paper buying those for 68 cents. If that doesn't float your boat, how about the June 15, 18, a little bit tighter? Paper bought that 20,000 times for 36 cents. On to Tuesday, 688,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, the big dog, 43. Looks like we had a, another vertical, July 25, 45. Because we have 43,000, pretty much 248 each of the July 25 and 45 calls going up. So looks like some vertical action. Don't think it's a roll, even though it was only opening. We could tell on the 45s. There's paper on the 25s. It's hard to tell. It obscures it a little bit. Uh, I don't think you'd be closing the 25s and rolling to the 45s right now in July. That'd be weird. So probably an opening call vertical. 41,000 as well of the June 15 half calls. 35,000 for number four of the June 14 half puts and 28,000 of the May 16s. And then kicking off the week on Monday, 772,000 of the May 15 calls, followed by 40K of the May 13 half calls, 30,000 of the May 14 puts, 26,000 of the May 18 calls, and 25,000 exactly of the June 65s. Had to sneak that one in there. 65s. I haven't seen one of those strikes in a while. There you go, listeners. 65. Mr. Rhodes, or excuse me, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster. I was just joking about the, the puts. But what do you think about some of these funky ratio risk reversals and uh, just this massive block of OC 42 halves going up for 46 cents? Anything catching your eye out there in a, a couple of days, a decent paper at least? I mean, yeah, you, you know, usually when you get down to 12, you see all this, you know, people looking for the bounce. And it's been, I mean, you have to be honest, every time we've traded the 12 handle in the last two years, we've been out of it within what? two weeks, one week. So, I mean, I, I see the paper going up, um, you know, and it, it could definitely work out, but, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know how long we sit here and sag, but I mean, the, 
mostly a lot of that risk reversal stuff when you sell the 13 put the 12 put i mean it takes it takes a while for that put to totally you know to totally stink basically and the fact that it is still an out of the money put even though it looks that it's at the money uh because where the future is i mean i could see why traders do it um but you know it's it's i just would say it's it's expected paper at this point you know what else is expected, listeners, when we're plumbing the depths out here in VIX to have new all-time highs in Russell's favorite product, SVIX. In fact, we are at it. We are at it pretty much right now, right around 46 and a half, listeners, is pretty much where we're ticking right now. And that is pretty much the new 52-week high. So blowing well past 40, blowing well past the previous high. I think it was around 42 and a half, somewhere in that range. Up two and three quarters points again on the week. So uh, SVIX hitting new highs. Mr. Rhodes, I have to assume uh, you are now completely out. You still have more in your back pocket. What's catching your eye in SVIX, sir? I have a quarter of a position. I haven't sold anything against it. Uh, and, and really the reason I haven't sold anything against it is I've got, uh, I'm, I'm net short the equity market. So if, uh, you know, if that stuff, if that stuff starts to work, the SVIX won't work. So I, it, it's, there have been a couple of days recently, SVIX is the only thing that worked for me. Um, so I'm, I'm still in it. Uh, I'd like to, you know, I, I'm always looking for a 10% retrace to, to add to it. So last week I said 40, I guess I'll say 42 now. <laughs> um, but I, I've just, I'm, I'm watching it. I'm happy. I own it. Uh, I'm happy. I haven't, you know, happy. I didn't sell calls against that last, last bit that I had uh, a couple of times. I came damn close to having it called away. And then I just decided to stop, uh, stop tempting fate. Like uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was short the 44s and it, I think it closed at 43.85. So I, um, I decided to stay out of the way for a little while until I have some more shares to sell calls against. That makes a certain amount of and sense. And I wanted to bring something else up. Okay. Can, I, can yeah. I deviate one sec? Yeah. I promise it'll be 15 seconds. Um, you mentioned why don't people do more of the collars? I think it's because of the margin situation. If you own the futures, if you're selling a call and owning a put, a lot of brokers are going to look at that short call as being uh, a naked short call. But we also tend to see on the tape uh, synthetic longs and synthetic shorts. And I think that's why I think it's because it's easier, um, or for, for margin purposes, uh, you can put on a synthetic long, uh, selling a put and buying a call and then buying a put and selling a call against those and end up with the same sort of, um, position. Yeah, that makes sense. We said it before in the yeah. show, the devil is in the detail in all these products. You would hope you'd have all your positions at one broker and they would see those as offsetting. But as we all know, that is not always the case. So I, I think you're right. Sometimes some extra legwork folks have to do to leg into what are effectively collar positions. We just don't see them going up like that here on the tape. Since we're coming up against it, listeners, I'll run down the rest of these vol ETPs, and we'll let uh, Mr. Dr. Vix and uh, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster have their ways. Uvix, 630, down almost a full point, nine-tenths of a point, uh, putting up 19,000 contracts today. And the ADV is 26,000, down 6,000. So as Uvix continues to erode, so does the volume out there in terms of top positions <laughs> we've got the jan 2026 one puts my goodness those went those are open those are open to 5188 times i have to just look really quickly i am curious listeners when did they open those and for how much they bought those on april 30th i thought those were fairly new they most opened most of them on April 30th. And what did they pay for them? If I can get my machine to play for me. 40 cents for the Jan 2026. Are you going out of ways? Why? 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 I mean, that's going to be, it's going to reverse play. That's going to be a vestigial position. It's going to be locked on your books. You won't be able to get out of it for years. Oh, that, that's a good one. Uh, UVXY 2540 down 2.4. On the on the week, twenty five thousand contracts. Uh, the ADV also continues to go the way of the dodo, forty one thousand down eight thousand. So uh, the reverse split not working wonders for them on the volume front. In terms of uh, size positions out there, looks like we have the number one being fourteen, almost fifteen thousand of the June eight calls. Those are those are the regulars now, not the pre split adjust. We have multiple pre split adjusted out here. Man, talk about nonsense. Uh, VXX 1140 down eight tenths of a point. 
uh, 26,000 contracts on the tape today. The ADV also going the way of the Dodo, 69,000, down 16,000. So across the board, it's been, even though there was some vol out there this week, it's kind of been an anemic volume week. In terms of top positions, the size position right now in VXX, 18,000 of the June 13 puts, which if past is prologue, they're long those, and those are looking pretty good right now. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catching your eye in the vol ETP space before we roll on into the crystal ball? Well, the best thing is, is the the put Sebastian and I bought in UVXY are up almost 100% in two weeks. So, which ones were uh, those? I actually rolled them today. So, uh, which ones were those? There's some volume on a couple of strikes in June to July. It's because uh, us and our students were doing the uh, pre the post split roll trade when UVXY gave us that lovely gift of splitting six for one. Why they don't do it ten for one, I don't know. But um, anyway. So I would say, yeah, there's a lot of uh, happy UVXY traders. Um, a hop, lot of happy UVXY traders out there. If you're short it, yes. if you're long it, you're you're in the moat, and somebody's violating you too. If you're long it, you were not listening to this show at all for years now. As we keep on rolling, <laughs> listeners, it's the final portion of the show. It's time to get dangerous. It is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the Crystal Ball. All right, everybody, welcome to the Crystal Ball, the portion of the show where we get difficult, we get dangerous. We attempt to divine what the Vol gods have in store for us for the coming week. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, we have V stocks coming in at a 1213. And we have VIX right now catching up, going down to about a 12.18 right now. So in terms of price level, we're hanging out at close to one to one again, which again is that dance. I was pricing in a bit of a premium last week, and I think so was The Rock. So was Mr. Dr. VIX. So I was at a 12 and a quarter, though, in my uh, VIX cash. We're at a 12.18 right now. So that's actually looking pretty good. I'm going to go winner, winner, chicken dinner for me on that one with the bullseye. V stocks. Not so much. I was at 12 and three quarters. And again, we're at 12, 13. So I was not pricing one to one VIX and V stocks. Uh, Andrew was the coward of the bunch. He only did VIX last week. He was at 11.97. Not bad. Uh, about 0.21 away. Close, but no cigar for him. And Mr. Rhodes going to the upside 12.89 for VIX. No cigar there. And 13 and a half for V stocks. Clearly no joy there. So a long way around. I'm the winner this week. So you know what? I'll kick things off. I will be the charitable one, allow everyone else some extra time to mull on their prognostications. All right, so we're at about a 1218 this week. And again, it, I would love to say that there's a catalyst for something to kick vol into higher gear. I just don't see it. Well, we hit, you know, if I predict 11 handle, it's going to come to pass here, listeners. I'm a little skittish about doing that, but I, I might have to go that way. I might have to say not much. I'm going to say 1195. And because V stocks. I'm having a hard time getting the levels, listeners, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say 12, 12, oh, three. So very close. 0.08 away on V stocks. All right. Who was next closest? It was Mr. Rock Lobster. You get to go next, sir. What are you feeling for VIX? And take a flyer. Go V stocks as well. Oh, um, so where's V, uh, where's V stocks trading now? Is that a 12, uh, what was it? 12, 13. Okay, yep. twelfth. Oh wow. Um, so all right, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll go eleven ninety nine for V stocks and eleven eighty five for VIX. All right, eleven ninety nine listeners. If I could type correctly, there we go. Eleven ninety nine for V stocks and what'd you say? Eleven eighty five for VIX. Yeah. So we just gotta let the show go a couple another minute and we'll be down to eleven yeah, ninety nine. Yeah. I'm only we'll, like twenty ticks away. We'll be close. We'll be close. <laughs> then last but not least, Mr. Once in Future V stocks. You should be really right on V stocks. Uh, maybe you're off on VIX these days. I don't know. But what what are your wagers for both, sir? Well, I'm gonna t <laughs> I was gonna do eleven ninety for VIX, but I'm not doing that now because that's just that's no fun at all. Um, you know, this is the, the the benefit of going last on the prices, right? Uh, you know, I, I I I I don't see any reason whatsoever that VIX should should do much of anything. 
So I'm going to say 1160 on VIX. That'll be a new that'll be a new 52 uh, week low for sure. And uh, I'm going to say 1220 on V stocks. I think the bottom's kind of in on that. Widen it out again. We shall see yep. out there, listeners. Speaking of seeing, let's look really quickly what you folks have. Oh, you, you can't make up your minds again. I turn to our audience as the ultimate arbiters. And once again, you are split exactly 50-50 on whether you want to buy or sell those July 11 puts <laughs> in VIX for a nickel out there, listeners. So yeah, 50-50 each. So no joy there, unfortunately, listeners. That's what makes a market, I suppose. Uh, let's go around the horn, though. Let's start with Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. If folks want to check out what you got cooking, where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, optionpit.com, 888-TRADE-01. Uh, if you want to learn how to buy puts in this market and not get taken the hoop, you do my weekly profit cycles where you get your VIX to pay for your SPY. And then when the SPY goes down, you make some money. So, uh, you can learn how to trade like that. There's all kinds of ways to trade, but, uh, you can learn how to trade options at option pit. There you go. And Mr. Rhodes, sir, if folks want to keep up with all your latest musings on V-Stocks, VIX versus V-Stock, all that fun you're cranking out right now, where should they go? What should they do? Well, I've got a sub stack, a free sub stack. Feel free to subscribe to that. I don't bother anybody to give me money or anything from that. It's just uh, my full name, Russell Rhodes, dot sub stack. Um, some things that I do will start, pop up on the NASDAQ website. Some things I do pop up on the uh, Eurostock site. Uh, so, you know, but I always uh, I tweet out anything I do. My Twitter is uh, at Russell Rhodes. If you follow options on Twitter, you'll see that they've already uh, tweeted my name a few times there. So I'm easy to find right now. You are an easy man to find. Two S's, two L's, R H O A D S, all one word on the old Twitter. If you want to see that data. And a lot more cooking over there. A couple of places you can go. Just go to the Eurex website, E-U-R-E-X dot com. That will have Russell's data and everything else out there. If you want to go straight to all things V-Stocks, stocks dot com, S-T-O-X-X dot com. We'll also do it. You can see the trading volume up there. You can see the historical trends. You can see OI, all that kind of stuff that may intrigue you if you're thinking about dipping your toes into these waters out here. Unfortunately, that music means we have come to the end of the show. That will also do it for all of you on-demand listeners. Thank you for joining us this week. If you want to keep the party going with myself and the Rock Lobster coming back in a little bit to break down all uh, the crazy paper, yeah, spoiler alert, there was some. It was a meme stock week after all, listeners. Uh, then you, you want to join us on the pro for options oddities. The only place to get that, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. I, we had someone write in recently, one of our pro members, just saying about how this, this stuff has really changed the game for him. If you're listening to a show like Options Oddities, you don't come away with at least a couple of nuggets that you're scr scratching your chin saying, hmm, maybe I want to look into those more, maybe you want to trade those, or stay far away from those, whatever the case may be, uh, then you're just not listening <laughs> because there's th that's the problem Rock Lobster and I have. We come away from the show wanting to trade all these things, and it's impossible. But uh, it's fascinating. It's a good problem to have theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. And then we're back again on Monday, kicking things off with the option block all the way through to next Friday, another episode of Volatility Views. Stay safe out there, everybody. The international volatility segment is brought to you by Eurex, home of Euro stocks, V stocks, DAX, and the German government bond-based Eurobund, Eurobobble, Euroshots derivatives, Eurex is the leading European derivatives exchange. Learn more about trading V-Stocks futures and options, the European volatility benchmark at www.eurex.com slash V-Stocks. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. 
select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.